this is a very uh, black and white slide, but really what I wanted to say about this is Court is involved in uh, product development year round. And we're really guided by not only trends in the market, but you know changes in the industry, our company objectives, and most important, our client feedback. Um, so we take all of that into consideration and we have stringent quality standards that we adhere to, but those are really the things that we're considering as we're developing new products. And the real, the two main points here uh, that I wanted to get across today um, is what's happening in design for our industry. And I think the biggest thing right now is these natural environments that are being created for shows large and small, for exhibits large and small and events. Um, you know, bringing the outdoors inside in various ways, and that can happen with greenery, with faux greenery, with organic natural elements, wood being one of those, and then using colors that promote harmony, which are the neutrals. Uh, and we're going to delve into this in a moment, but the second point here is uh, something else that I'm very excited about is the 70s retro modernism trend in design. Mm -hmm. So, and this... Um, is kind of a little bit on the other side of the first trend I just talked about, but um, greenery plays into that and you can uh, achieve this look with 70s retro modernism by also using neutral colors, but you can also incorporate more vibrant colors, patterns and shapes and other, you know, styles of furniture like art deco. Um, really, it's about eclecticism and bringing back um, that 70s vibe and feel, which is uh, very surprising and unique and cool. Uh, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, retro modernism. I mentioned the bold colors, rich textures, patterns and prints. What I love about this um, image here is uh, that's Quartz Brighton um, chair there that also has a corresponding love seat. But we simply did a striped pattern on it that is very 70s inspired um, with those warm tones. It's very bold, um, you know, bringing in different elements, wood, granite, um, metallics, you know, bringing those in and also with the soft textures as well. You really create an exciting look and environment. And this is a, a shot we did in a studio a few months ago and it really embodies the whole uh, retro modernism theme you can see all of the various textures and patterns a lot of this is achieved uh using personalization so whether it's graphics on those tables um or it's slip covers that go over ottomans and seating you can really incorporate a lot of different textures and color in your design by using personalization and this is just a really great example of all of these things coming together in a very eclectic design um, to create something that is really fresh and new. And uh, this is really how we've been designing our exhibits this year with this in mind. And I think it's uh, it's playful, um, but it does create that environment that still is warm and makes people want to sit and linger and engage. Uh, another big design trend is modern bohemian. Um, this is eclecticism, but um, incorporating more Danish modern and art deco um, pieces. There are graceful sh shapes, sculptural furnishings. Um, it's really about reflecting, a, you know, the diverse lifestyles and the diversity out there with our clients. Um, it is very relaxed, but it's also sophisticated. And again, bringing in natural elements, which include greenery, various textures, um, you know, from wood to marble. Um, you know, you see even the uh, the more bohemian uh, I bottom vibe Ottoman cube there in the front. Again, that's a cover um, that we've just introduced and, you know, bringing all of these elements together to create this cohesive look that is still very warm and inviting. Oops, went the wrong way. Um, a couple of other uh, designs here representing modern bohemian. Um, both of these were designed more as breakout sessions for meetings. So you can see um, as we you know, got out of the pandemic, um, attendees want to be comfortable. 
They want to have places where they can sit and work quietly or work together in small groups. Um, but again, it, it, it's bringing in all of these various design elements to create this space that makes them want to linger, makes them want to engage. Um, I wanted to really quickly, you know, what is Danish modern inspired furnishings and really is iconic shapes, mid-century modern modernism, small profile, organic materials, lots of neutrals, but the emphasis for these types of uh, uh, furnishings are simplicity with functionality and some <clears throat> good representations of them there. Um, and then what is Art Deco? Because it's really Danish modern and Art Deco are the two uh, design trends in furnishings that are really important right now. And these are great examples of more Art Deco inspired furnishings, very romantic curvy shapes, lots of soft textures and fabrics, detailed stitching for a little bit more drama. And it all comes together in a sophisticated uh, look and environment. And uh, again, many of the images, most all the images I'm showing are representations of court furniture, court furnishings styled and designed um, to create these images. So I feel really strongly when I do these presentations that you know, when we're talking about these design trends that I show you how we are um, uh, executing them in our imagery and our merchandising. So let's talk a little bit about color. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but some main themes here. Again, warm organic hues, and I'm going to go into those. Uh, greens. Green um, is probably the most important color right now, and we'll talk about all that. Um, the light neutrals, which are uh, lend that sense of calm. And then, you know, golden wheats and golds are trending again, and still we're seeing the blues and the blue grays uh, to be important. So organic hues, let's talk about those. Uh, rustic browns, adobe, tiramisu, you know, terracotta, these earth tones, um, they pair with the soothing neutrals really well. They create those comfortable spaces that, uh, you know, in are warm and inviting for attendees to come in and engage. So uh, just some examples of those tones. And then the light neutrals, which if you've been into a restoration hardware or a lot of the furniture stores, you know, you really have seen a lot of these light neutrals um, in the furnishings that are out there for residential. And it's about, you know, these calm hues. A lot of it can be monochromatic, as you're seeing here all together. You know, the feeling is uh, comforting again. Uh, so you can combine various light neutrals together, where it's, where it's the oatmeal with the beige, um, with the creams, and then lots of different textures as well to give it a lot more visual interest. Okay, green. So green is my favorite hue right now. Um, and Everything from the khakis to the olives, avocado, to the deep forest, the sage, they're all trending right now. And I'm gonna show you some examples, but uh, green really is the new gray. Gray was trending about five, six years ago, uh, but now it's all about the green. And again, I think as we come out of the pandemic and the whole biophilic trend of bringing the outdoors inside, you know, really green is that color of well-being. So, you know, here's the, the hues in the basil, moss, olive, sage. And then the more moodier greens from forest to emeralds. Um, and even, you know, as you move into some of the brighter tones as well, um, that a lot of corporate logos, you know, use the, the bolder colors as well in the greens. Um, you can really style with green and, you know, style monochromatically across the color spectrum of green. So you can use the light greens with the, the darker and uh, richer greens all together in one design. Uh, blues. So I, blue really is, is a, like a neutral like black, white, and gray. So it also provides a sense of calm. And you know when used with gray, a lot of the blues that we're seeing right now have a lot of dark, hu un, dark hues and undertones. And so uh, you know, again, you can style blues and grays together, but then you can also use it as a neutral and style, style it with some of the warmer hues as well. Uh, 
just more representations of you know all of the different types of blue um, in the upper left hand corner you know you're seeing our allegro sofa which is i would call it that corporate blue which tends to go in and out i was just at the neocon show last week which is uh really a contract uh, furniture manufacturer show in chicago and I was surprised, but not surprised. These to these tones in the blue, these really azure corporate blues, were really trending at the show. So you know, just when you think it's it's uh, you know maybe a little passe, they come back again. So, and I think part of that too is you know blue again is welcoming, it is calming, and it is a neutral. So plus a lot of corporate logos have that color uh, in their uh, marketing and their merchandising. Some other uh, colors that are out there that are uh, you can also use for vibrant pops, the jewel tones, you know, they're more dramatic and saturated. Uh, that was trending a little more a few years ago, but we're still seeing it and you can still use these, especially in those, you know, bold uh, designs from, you know, the retro modernism. You can bring these in very easily um, to create, you know, different eclectic type looks and I love this picture uh, image on the bottom left uh, in a hotel ballroom you know using the bright colors and the jewel tones that coordinate maybe with some of the wilder carpets that are in the hotels and the venues as well and so you can kind of rather than play against those carpets you know you can use those as a way to uh, you know reinforce that design so I, I really love that image there uh, black black and charcoal so Again, black is a neutral. It is. Uh, it kind of went out of favor a few years ago, but we're certainly see it back uh, now again. You know, using um, dark uh, colors in table bases, whether it's accent or bar, is really trending right now in chairs. Um, you know, we're seeing it. Black represents a very professional-looking environment, and so it is having a, a, a reemergence right now in design. And then using black with white, um, I, I had this slide, I think maybe last year when I did this and I kept it in because uh, black and white used together is a great juxtaposition of the and dark, light and dark. Um, and then white, of course, truly never goes out of style in our industry because it is a clean palette. You can style it with any logo or any brand um, and it, just creates that clean, fresh feeling that you can play off of and, you know, use your bold statement colors um, and it'll always work well. So, you know, at Court, really white has been our most rented color for the past 15 years. You know, we, we see resurgence of some of these others, but white really never goes out of style. So, um, you know, I always talk about white because you're never going to go wrong using white. Design attributes. So I really uh, wanted to talk about, you know, some of these, you know, different types of attributes. Um, velvet, as far as a fabric, that has been the trending fabric now for five, six years. And it, amazingly enough, even at Neocon that I was just at, the HD show, hospitality and design show in May in Las Vegas, High Point this year, you know, velvet is still the most prominent fabric out there. And, uh, you know, it, of course, in an array of colors, um, but it really just brings that softness, that comfort. Um, it, it's just a little more inviting. And I think that's really what attendees are looking for when they're, you know, um, at a trade show or an event now. They want to sit down, they want to engage, they want to be comfortable. Curves also lend themselves to that. Uh, that, that design aesthetic is a little softer um, rather than straight edges. It's welcoming, welcoming, it makes spaces feel cozier. So, you know, I think, um, you know, incorporating curves into your design, you know, helps to soften spaces. Stitching details, just a, a, a plethora of stitching details right now. Again, it provides visual interest and um, also uniqueness that, uh, you know, just to take a basic box like that sofa on the upper left and, you know, with that, you know, dramatic tufting, it just changes the, you know, the whole look. 
black frames. I mentioned them earlier, just you know, showing an array of these are a lot of newer products that we've introduced um, in the past few years, and almost all of our tables and you know bar stools and chairs that we're doing now um, have that option with the black frames, and it really just feels fresh and it feels modern, and it goes with you know any color. Mixed materials. I mentioned eclecticism earlier in the presentation and, you know, taking chances on design, using all of these different um, uh, finishes and textures together, you know, really create a more customized and vibrant and interesting look uh, that I think as I've been in this industry 22 years, you know, I think customers a couple of decades ago weren't as open to this type of design. But now as our customers are younger, uh, they're more open and accepting to, you know, diversity in design. And so it really allows us to take chances, especially, <clears throat> you know, in exhibits, whereas a few years years ago that just was not the case so you know now when, when someone comes to a trade show or you know an event they, they want these environments that feel like home they want to you know have that sense of belonging and um you know and they're more open to color and they're more open to different textures so i think that that's a, a really big takeaway now is you you can take chances in your design and your attendees are going to appreciate that uh, some more concepts and and this is really concepts of you know <clears throat> designing spaces that really work for today's <clears throat> programs so individual spaces are really important to create when you're um, designing for whether it's a large trade show or a medium or small type of meeting attendees are working all the time and they need spaces to work quietly and work alone on their devices. And so we have to be able to create those spaces for them. They're not private spaces, but semi-private spaces where they can go and take a phone call. Uh, you see it at meetings, they're not well-designed. People you know, sitting on the floor outside in the hallways or um, you know, sitting in a windowsill, you know, trying to get a way to have a, a private phone call or you know, work quietly on their device. So it just makes sense that we design for those spaces. And some companies like Center Circle out there right now, you know, they've done a lot of research on this type of um, you know, design for meetings and events. And I think it really resonates. And, and you know, when you see a, attendees at a show, they're always searching out for these types of spaces. And in, in addition to those individual areas, you know, there's more small group areas. Again, attendees are working in these areas, but they're working in more uh, with maybe other attendees they know, or they're open to have, you know, uh, a colleague sit near them. They're still doing work, but they're having conversations. They're still, you know, their laptop is still there, but, you know, they're collaborating and it's kind of a semi, you know, informal way to network and still getting work done, but, you know, in a smaller group where they are feeling relaxed and it becomes a very collaborative type of environment. So designing for those types of spaces, again, is important. So you've got the individual spaces and then you've got these, you know, smaller group areas that are semi-private where people can connect. VIP seating. So, you know, post-pandemic, uh, VIP seating, I think, has become really important when you're talking about attendees coming to a meeting or a show or an event that, you know, you really want to take care of and provide them an owned space that's uh, comfortable, that might have a table next to it, charging outlets nearby, um, you know, it really helps to increase the engagement and facilitate the education and learning in a lot of different spaces, whether it's a breakout or whether it's a large, you know, conference room, you know, again, making someone comfortable, making them, uh, you know, feel welcome. That's all part of this aesthetic uh, that really makes attendees, you know, uh, remember an event and have an experience that's going to be different than maybe the last conference they attended. 
Charging and power, everybody has a device now, or one or two or three. I always travel with at least three or four devices. So uh, charging is important again, and people are always searching out outlets. And so, you know, whether you're bringing it in with uh, like our little village charging hub that can be moved around, or, you know, something that uh, where the power is in a table that's fixed somewhere. It's just important to have those areas where, you know, someone can sit and charge their device and work at the same time. Uh, you know, this is kind of uh, intuitive, really, but you've got a big space. You got to fill it somehow. You know, sectionals are a great way to do that, especially curved sectionals. You know, they, they, allow plenty of space for guests and attendees to network, relax, have casual conversations, and, and fill up that space. And if you're really looking for a value way to fill up space, you know, Ottoman groupings are another way to achieve that um, and be able to personalize and customize a look, you know, based on a brand or a message that you want to convey. Um, you know, the Ottomans that we offer at court can all be personalized. And, you know, even though they come in 13 different colors, uh, they can be personalized with a slip cover and printed with your brand logo or a design motif or a, you know, a Pantone color that you want to use in your design. So, very versatile value type seating it takes up space and again it allows people to sit and casually work in a semi-private way but still engage with others and you know colleagues that they might might want to uh you know have a casual conversation with can't say it enough the biophilic design trend is the most important trend happening out there at neocon which again was a work uh, space conference last week in Chicago. <clears throat> All of the big workplace uh, uh, furniture manufacturers have incorporated, you know, greenery into their workspaces. As people are trying to bring companies are trying to bring people back into the office, this is one of the ways to do that. That is to bring the outdoors in, creates that sense of well-being. Um, greenery is great because you can we, you can use it to divide space. Um, whether it's a hedge or a tree, um, and it really grounds that design in a more natural environment. And the last thing I want to say about biophilia here is in the center, you can see this is one of our acrylic dividers that we brought on in the pandemic. Um, but as you can see, they can be personalized using greenery. So another way to bring in space, it's not a hedge, it actually helps divide space, but incorporating that you know, look of greenery into the design. So a really versatile way, another idea for bringing in greenery without actual, you know, faux plants or real plants. Outdoor spaces, you know, during the pandemic, every event planner, meeting planner was looking for, you know, outdoor spaces to hold their events. Um, you know, people like to be outdoors. And if the weather is good, if, you know, there's a space that you can, incorporate whether it's a patio or a deck uh, into your event whether it's social or whether it's just those spaces i talked about for collaboration if you can do it outdoors you know your attendees are always going to appreciate that um, and then you know vip spaces outdoors as we all know you know creating cabanas or semi-private uh, vip areas it's a great way to generate revenue because you can sell them um, and to, you know, as a place for your sponsors to also, you know, showcase their brand as well. Accessories, you know, Court, we we love accessories because it's another way to customize uh, design, whether it's rugs and pillows, uh, you know, lighting, um, as well as drape, which is uh, another way to soften a room, to help divide space to you know bring in uh color so and even to reinforce the biophilic trend like we've done some designs on um some of our shows and events where we used you know the the forest green drape and so it's just another way to reinforce you know the greenery and all the other green elements um into a design so and you know in many spaces maybe the walls aren't so gorgeous uh, bringing in drape, you know, just adds a, a, a more of a cozy uh, private uh, um, element to your design. Hey, Kevin, can I ask a quick question? It's from Rebecca. 
She sure. says she's in, she's intrigued by slip covers. Do they work on all pieces or are there patterns or templates templates available for branding? That moves right into the next slide. That's a great question. Thank you, uh, Rebecca. So we have certain pieces in our collection that are naturally suited to slip covers um, and that, you know, benches and ottomans are really the uh, the way that we have offered that almost on every single one of our benches and almost every single ottoman. Um, we do have our Brighton seating collection, which is, you know, has a love seat, a corner chair and an armless chair. And those were those chairs I showed in one of the first slides. Those are slip covers and can be slip covered as well. And again, you can change that look to anything and they fit tight. They they don't look like, you know, the old uh, term shabby chic. They fit tight. They look intentional. The uh, printing is very, very sharp on it. And it, it really is cost effective, you know, it, rather than going out and, you know, trying to find a certain uh, color in a sofa or in seating, you know, you can use these covers and they are reusable as well. So, you know, you can use it for one event, you can save the covers and use it on another event. Uh, so you know, again, mainly Ottomans, um, but we do have the bright Brighton seating collection where you, you know, it is an actual love seat. You can create sectional sofas, all of that using the slip covers. So, uh, and then, you know, personalization goes across the hard goods as well, whether it's tabletops, I love to do prints on tabletops, um, bar fronts, you know, reg, reg counters, again, you know, taking your brand, extending it across different uh, you know, types of furnishings is a great way to create a customized, unique, curated experience for attendees. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the products that we have introduced this year and are still introducing this summer <clears throat> as we address some of these trends, whether it's biophilia or, you know, the retro modernism, uh, you know, modern boho. A lot of that is what <clears throat> what we've introduced to address these trends. Um, but I'm going to start with the blade bar stool and chair, which we had in green and uh, excuse me, blue and red, and we introduced it in black because we got a lot of feedback that, hey, why don't you do that in something that's more neutral and black is a neutral. So, uh, and it's, of course, it's trending in furnishing. So we're really excited about that. Uh, these are safe for outdoor use. We're adding, a, you know, always thinking about products that can be used outdoors, and this is one of them. Uh, the Chelsea, this is one of our most exciting new collections. Uh, it will be available by August 1st, 1st of August. Um, it is an iconic style that everybody recognizes. You can see that we did it in bar, stool, and chair in that black tower base. Uh, these are what we're calling the neutral colors. And that faux walnut is actually plastic, but it looks like wood. And then of course, what I would call, call in term the corporate colors, uh, the orange, yellow, and the azure blue. So lots of different options here again. Uh, we also did Chelsea uh, with a what I, it, what is a wood look tower base. So it is not oak, but it looks like oak. So uh, you know when we we think about bringing on new products into our collection, you know wood is something we know we need to have. It's a natural element. It's trending, but we're doing a lot of metals with um, the faux wood finish on them, and you really have to get up and touch it to even like you know, be aware that, oh, that's not wood, but we do that because that will make furnishing stand up to the rigors of our uh, rental environment for shows and events. Also did Chelsea with the uh, casters for a little steno chair. Um, Brooklyn, so we introduced a, a new collection of meeting chairs called Brooklyn last year in the white, and now we've extended the collection into the black. So again, another neutral, uh, these are great for meetings where um, you want to provide somebody with a really comfortable seat that's more comfortable and a little larger than a banquet chair, um, but it's still small enough profile where you can do a lot of them in a room and they won't take up uh, a, too much space. Uh, so you can still get a lot of attendees into a room. Aspen, so I mentioned earlier the, the faux 
uh, wood on metal. Uh, and this is a, a perfect representation of a Danish modern inspired piece. So we did it with the black and the pebble linen fabric. Uh, and then it has a, the love seat in the black that it you know, coordinates. These are great for staging, stage seating, VIP seating. They mix really well with all sorts of soft seating. Again, bringing in that Danish modern aesthetic um, with a really durable, high quality piece being made of metal. Uh, Brighton, I've mentioned it several times. Uh, we introduced it last year in white. This year we've introduced Brighton in a sand slipcover. So this is a slipcover and it fits super tight. Um, we're playing into the trend of those neutral fabrics. The, the, we're calling this sand. Um, and it's a really nice soft fabric, but it's also outdoors. So Brighton, you can rent it in our white or you can rent it now in this indoor outdoor sand fabric, or again, it can be personalized very easily um, to create a customizable look. Monroe, so I spoke about Art Deco being the other trend in furnishings, Monroe embodies that. Uh, this little chair is great for stage seating as well. Um, also really good um, for soft seating and small collaboration spaces. It has, again, the uh, corresponding love seat. Uh, th this is a really great piece. It looks dynamite in person. You can see that we did it in those trending new that trending neutral color. We're calling it a mink gray velvet. Uh, so it, you can really pair it with all sorts of warm uh, colors and tones or light fabrics. Uh, we did a, a collection of the Bohemian Ottoman covers. So three of them here with our Marche, and you can see, you know, the various patterns that are playing into those trends, and then also the square vibe covers as well. So it really changes the look. It adds that extra element that you know takes it to that Bohemian, um, you know, look in these neutral colors. Uh, some new cocktail tables uh, for us. Pretty basic here in black, white, and glass, but they replace our Sydney collection. Um, we've downsized the tables a little bit um, as well to make them more appropriate for booth seating and exhibit seating and, and the tables that correspond to them. So just a little bit smaller than our Sydney collection. And of course, we have to have a powered option as well uh, because everybody's trying to bring in power, whether it's in the seating or in the tables. And then, you know, we always introduce um, side tables. Side tables are great. These are the types of tables that you can, you know, style with four chairs around them to create those campfire configurations. Um, and then uh, side tables as well. And, and really, this is a small table that we kind of, you know, it's being referred to as a drink table. Really great for putting one of these in between each chair if you're doing VIP seating in a theater or on a stage. Just a great place, you know, for someone to put a cup of coffee down if you have panels. Um, so, you know, you, you can use them in many ways or cluster them with other side tables as well um, to create that, you know, uh, customized look. And again, if you look at our accessories, this really kind of tells the story of, of where we went this year with those neutral palettes, um, lots of earth tones, you know, uh, the designs that really represent, you know, the world styles, whether it's, uh, you know, prints and fringes. So um, this, this really does tell the story of, you know, design for this year for us. And then finally, we did add, very excited about uh, these new pieces of greenery. We've had boxwood hedges for a while, and these are called Havana Palms. Um, we did the divider, which is four foot across, uh, seven feet high. And we did them in white, whereas our boxwood hedges have a black plastic uh, uh, base. These are white plastic. They can be personalized with graphics as well. Um, but something else we did with this particular collection is it is flame retardant. So we, we you know, keep getting asked, you know, do you have greenery that is appropriate um, for these spaces where they're requiring, you know, flame retardant certificates? So this greenery um, does that as well. And then a little succulent bowl for tabletops. So that's the new collection that we just introduced this year. 
And, uh, you know, I think we hit on all of the trends that we're trying to represent and how to use those in, you know, designing spaces that are functional, that make people want to engage with each other, um, the, and that are welcoming. And that's my presentation. Uh, Mel, do we have any other questions? Or if this would be a good time, if you've got some questions or want to talk a little bit about design, we have some time. Yes, um, while people are typing some questions in, um, I do have a kind of big picture question for you, Kevin. And, you know, I've been in this industry long enough that I know many, many years ago, there were that having furniture, having some places to sit down in the booth was kind of poo pooed. You didn't really want that. You didn't want the, you know, either your attendees or the staff to be able to sit down. That seems to have changed dramatically in the last few years. Why do you think that trend is? kind of solidifying? Well, having having uh, exhibited in hundreds of booths over the years um, and dozens with court, I think, you know, getting people to come into your booth is so important. And it seems to be more and more difficult to do and to differentiate yourself. So I think once you have got someone to come into your booth, I think you want to keep them there because you're going to have a better opportunity to engage with them, to describe your products, to build that relationship. Uh, and so I think, you know, in the past, and, and this still happens, there's a lot of perching going on you know a lot of times people don't want to come into a booth and sit because as an attendee you're you may have a lot of booths and places to go and you don't want to you know commit in your body language if you're sitting sometimes is um you, you might be there too long so there's a lot of perching happening that's why i think you know you can come in and people will sit on an ottoman or they will sit you know on the edge of a bar stool um, where they're just kind of perched and then mm -hmm. you know it, once you can engage them in a conversation, maybe then you can move them over to an area where they can, you know, actually sit and have a conversation. So when I'm styling a booth, I really think about, OK, how do we attract them in? Is there a, a space where they can come in and just, you know, dab their toe into the booth and perch for a little bit and then you can engage them? And then I, I've seen this happen once they get in and that, you know, it's a comfortable environment then they can be moved over to seating because people most people won't come in and just plop down in your booth it just doesn't happen they they tentatively come in they look for a place where they can rest or perch for a minute start that conversation but then that seating is very important because you want to be able to have a, a longer conversation to engage with them to learn about their business you to learn about theirs or, or them to learn about your products and services so i think it, it's a it's a progression. <laughs> and I think mm -hmm. when you're thinking about a booth, if you've got the space, you should have, you know, uh, those openings that give people that ability to come in and, and not commit in the beginning, but then the spaces where they can sit down and connect um, once they're feeling a little more comfortable. I want to echo something you said earlier when you were talking about the wood grains and <clears throat> And I know when I was at Exhibitor Live and I was looking at uh, the, the court furniture, a lot of the new stuff, and I was looking at some of the lines like the newer one, like the Aspen, you actually had to tell me, you had to point out to me that that was metal because it did not look like, like metal at all. It looked like wood on there. And I was so excited to see the wood grains on there um, because that was a trend that I hadn't seen in the past. And it's something that at least from my gut reaction is going to be widely accepted. So what went through your head as you were choosing those kind of design, designs and heading that direction, Kevin? Well, it, that's a great question because, you know, I've been doing this at court, you know, product for 15 years and I'm always trying to get, you know, wood products into our collection. And we have had some in the past that, that just didn't hold up. And, and that, that particular design, you know, it is Danish modern and Danish modern is, a classic design element, you know, and and it it's trending now. And so I really wanted, felt very strong about getting that look into our collection. And the advances in manufacturing now are great for our industry because now that it's it's a steel frame, and you know the the uh, the manufacturing process is so good, you do have to touch it. And and I'm not showing that piece right now, but it's not just a tube, they've actually got a tapered tube. Um, and, and so that's what makes it look like real wood. 
And so, you know, again, even sometimes when you touch it, you're like, is that wood? So, uh, you know, I've always wanted to have these types of furnishings in our collection. But now that, you know, with advances in the manufacturing and in the processes, we can do that and still, you know, present something that's going to last and, and be able to stand up to that environment. So, All right. Thanks, Kevin. We don't have any other questions. If you don't mind, um, in addition to looking at uh, finding some of these products on classic exhibit design search out there, where can they find these products on the court sites? Yep. If you just go to courtevents.com, um, uh, court.com is our parent company. So that's the long term rental side. So it has to be courtevents.com. And then um, we do have a, a tab for the new products. So you can see all the new products in one place. Um, new releases and then there's also inspiration photos there as well you know there's galleries and uh, again we also I should mention we have a space planner through a company called All Seated it is free and uh, you just have to register and you can seamlessly design a space um, there are there's a library of spaces already there but you can also uh, put in your own dimensions design that space and then uh, you can just hit the button and it will, you know, send a quote request into our system and somebody will contact you. So, you know, it's a seamless way to design for a space that you have and then get more information about that product afterwards. If I'm not mistaken, there's also a library available that uh, folks can download. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, we have 2D and 3D renderings um, in probably eight or nine various uh, types. Uh, from SketchUp to AutoCAD, 3D Max. So uh, those are all available for download, whether it's in, by individual product or you can download by groups of product, like you can download all of our bar stools. Um, if anybody wants um, a copy of your PowerPoint, is that available, Kevin? I We can make it available, yep. I can. All right, so. yeah. So it, if you can share your email address and maybe folks can reach out to you. Yeah, it's kevin.dana, D-A-N-A, at court.com. So All right. if there's any other questions about design or, you know, the direction we're going in our furnishings, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to uh, engage. 